Okay, we're going to start with the candidates for uh, the three council seats. We have six candidates here tonight, and each candidate will have two minutes to tell you about themselves and why they are running for the council seat. Uh, Dalila Edwards here to my left is our timer this evening, and so everybody understands how it's going to work, and the candidates as well. Uh, we have three signs. Uh, Dalila will show you the signs. You know what you're looking for. Uh, one says 30 seconds, another says 15 seconds, and the last one is your friendly stop, <laughs> okay? So um, we just want to make sure that you guys have an idea of the status of the time, so it gives you a little bit of help there. So uh, we had a random drawing uh, before we got started here to determine the order in which the candidates will respond, and uh, so after... We do the candidate introductions. We're going to have some questions, and the candidates will be asked the questions and also do the introductions uh, in the order in which they were drawn. It's all random drawing. And so uh, for the introductions, the candidates are going to have two minutes to tell us about themselves, introduce themselves, and tell us um, you know, why they are running for the council seat. And so that will be two minutes. And then when we start the questions, uh, we're going to have the same questions for all the candidates. And each candidate will have a minute and a half to answer the question. So we're going to start now. Um, the person, the candidate who drew number one is Melody Bell. And Melody, uh, please, uh, you have two minutes to share with us why you're running for uh, the city council seat. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. Um, as she said, my name is Melody Bell, and I've been a Shiloh resident here for five years as of July 27th. Um, I am a mother of four, and I own two small family businesses here on the mountain. And I feel as if I would be a great fit for the council. Um, being a resident and wanting to raise my family here, I'm also a great leader. I am compassionate, I'm always willing to learn, and I'm a very dedicated individual. Um, I'm very involved with the youth. I have a, a very large passion for the youth, especially here on the mountain with being a mom and being involved in a lot of my kids' extracurricular activities throughout the community and or with the schools, um, as well as being very involved in the community. Um, and I would be a great asset and I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Melody Bell. Very good. Uh, the next candidate is Dawn Wilson. She drew the number two spot. Dawn? Lucky number two. Hi, my name is Dawn Wilson. And first of all, I'd like to thank all the citizens of Sholo who actually signed my petitions to help me get on the ballot for the August 4th election. I am a local business owner, and I have my own private investigation agency. I am a prior law enforcement officer, investigator for the state of Arizona, and investigator for the Navajo County Public Defender's Office. I have 25 plus years in criminal justice. I moved to the White Mountains in 1999. I've been a Sholo resident since 2001. I am a single mother of one son who just turned 20. My son suffered a traumatic brain injury at the age of four, and by the grace of God, he survived. I am currently the Navajo County Criminal Justice Coordinator, and one of my duties is to work with mental health providers, government, and law enforcement um, to help reduce the number of people going through the criminal justice system um, who are affected by mental illness. I was recently appointed by the City Council to the Sholo Planning and Zoning Commission, and I believe that that position will only help me to be much better um, being a member of the be much better if I'm elected as a member of the Sholo City Council. I hold a Master of Science in Administration of Justice um, with a concentration on law enforcement organizations. I hold a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice and Human Services. I am working on a second Master's of Public Administration. I believe that leadership is a privilege and carries with it the responsibility to inspire and educate others. Um, and direct them to obtain the visions and goals of the city of Sholo based on what is best for our city. I look forward to building stronger community relationships, enhancing community involvement, and encouraging active citizen engagement. And thank you so much for allowing me to be here tonight. Don Wilson, thank you very much. In the number three spot, uh, Connie Kakavas. Connie? 
Good evening, and thank you everyone for attending uh, here tonight and uh, via electronic um, abilities as well. Um, my name is Connie Kakavas. I'm a fourth generation citizen of Sholo. I was born and raised here. Um, my great grandfather's name was James Clark Owens, so I'm related to a lot of people in town. Uh, I went to high school here, graduated high school, and started right off my career with the city of Sholo. I started with the city of Sholo and when I was 18 years old, and I worked for them for going on 32 years. Um, shortly thereafter, um, I retired and went to work as the chief human resources officer for the Summit Healthcare um, Association. Um, that position has grown from 623 employees to our currently the largest employer in Navajo and Apache County with about 1,500 employees. Um, I'm very involved in the community. I always have been. I raised my children here. They both graduated from high school here. I have seven wonderful grandchildren. Uh, I believe in the history of Sholo. I love the citizens of Sholo. I love this hometown feeling that I have when I'm here. Uh, you can go away from Sholo for a little bit, but when you come home, you really feel at home. I want to continue on the city council. This would be my third term. Been on the council for eight years. I have several projects that I would like to see come to fruition before I leave the council. And so I would really appreciate your support. And again, thank you for your participation in our community. We appreciate your support and always welcome your input. And your city council is here for you. Thank you, Connie Kakavas. In the number four slot, Jack Latham. Hi. First, I want to thank the chamber for hosting this. Um, I want to thank everybody who came to the special meeting last night, yesterday afternoon. Uh, it was well attended. And, and I think the council did a great job with their decision. I've lived in Shell Low since 1994. Uh, well, I moved to the White Mountains in 94. I moved to Sholo in 98. Um, I was married for 48 and a half years. My beautiful wife passed away December the 26th from lymphoma. I retired from the Army in 1989 as a first sergeant of the infantry. And uh, I bought a company that I transferred up here with in 1994. I bought it from them in 1998. And uh, my son-in-law and daughter currently own it and are still in business here. I'm retired. Um, I was congressional liaison for Congressman Rick Renzi for five years. That's where I met Dawn. <laughs> she was one of our interns. I was on the Sholo Planning and Zoning Commission for five years, maybe six, I can't remember. I came off of that when I was elected to the city council in 2008. I served on the council until 2012. I'm a past commander of the local VFW post 9907 twice. I'm a past district commander for the VFW. I'm a member of Grace Church. I'm a past president and the current chaplain for our local Gideon camp here in the White Mountains. And I would appreciate your vote and the reason I want to be, uh, uh, it's a great place to live and I want to do my part so my grandchildren who live here can have a better place. Thank you. Jack Latham, thank you. Next in line is Ray Duran. Ray? Thank you for having me here. My name is Ray Duran. I am an Arizona born native. I was born in Winslow and from there I joined the military. I have 20 years, or actually over 20 years of Army service and reserve service, and I retired as a captain. I also have just over 20 years of service as a police officer with various uh, positions there. Now, I am married for 38 years. I have a son and a daughter and three grandchildren. I've been living in Sholo for only three years, and the reason uh, I'm living here now is that we bought a temporary place just for the summertime about four years ago, and my wife said, this is paradise. I want to live here. She was born and raised in Yuma. So, uh, currently I'm a teacher. 
I've been teaching for 14 years. My life has been a life of service. I dedicate myself to the things that are important. And so I feel that because of my years, not only with law enforcement and also with military and teaching, that I can do a very, very good job for the city of Sholo. I hold a bachelor's degree in administration of justice and a master's in education. I believe in stable government. I've been in a city where things were not done properly and put the city in jeopardy. I'm the type of person that looks and studies and weighs all the issues. I need your vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ray Duran. Thank you so much. Now our, we're going to finally hear from John Adams. John? Thank you. Uh, my name is John Adams. Um, I was born and raised here in Sholo. I graduated from Sholo High School. I'm raising my family here. My daughters have graduated from Sholo High School. I have two twin boys that are going to Sholo schools now, and hopefully they graduate from Sholo High School. So I have a long family tra tradition in, in Sholo, uh, grandparents, and uh, it goes way back to the beginning of Sholo. I've been a small business owner since 2000 here in Sholo. I've been on the planning and zoning for six years, and I've enjoyed and loved that opportunity, and I've loved learning how uh, city government works and learning that process. Um, I feel like I come from, uh, I got an interesting perspective of Sholo because I remember where Sholo was 30, 40 years ago when we weren't the commercial hub we are today. And, um, and that's, and we're here today because of a lot of good planning. And I think we need to have a good plan to where we're gonna be in the next 30 or 40 years. Um, being a small business owner, I understand some of the challenges and things that we go through and have to deal with living on the mountain and, uh, and, and as a small business and as a community. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I think the growth that we've had is in the past is because we've had a great city council and, and city management that's done a good job in, in um, having a plan for Sholo to grow like they have in the last uh, couple of decades and, 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 been, and gone forward and growing and bringing in commercial businesses and, and being productive. I look forward to doing a lot more uh, serving in the community, and I look, for, look forward for your vote. Thank you. All right, John Adams, thank you. All right, that concludes the introduction portion of uh, the forum this evening. Now we're going to move on to the questions, and I want to remind you that all the candidates tonight are going to have the same questions, and each candidate will have one and a half minutes to answer, to give their thoughts on the question. And um, we tried to calculate it down to the last second to try to keep things moving along. And so we're going to return to Melody Bell, who drew the first position uh, for answering. Melody, uh, the first question is, do you think our main street slash downtown is healthy and successful? And if not, what would you do to change that? I believe that the main street is healthy. Um, a lot of the members of Main Street are friends and we collaborate and speak of what's happening. And I think with some of the things that have happened throughout the town that people have come together and have helped clean up the Main Street and have made it nice. And um, so I do think it's a very healthy, safe place to be. Melody Bell, thank you. We're gonna move on to Don Wilson, Don. I do. I, I agree with Melody. I do think that our, our main street is healthy, but there's always room for improvement. And I think that what we can do is we can continue to market ourselves and to um, promote our city and bring in resources and, and different events and, and just get people up here to see what our main street um, area provides for people. I just think it's, it's a wonderful little town and we need to get it out there and let people know that. Don Wilson, thank you. Connie Kakavas. Connie? Yes, I do think that our main street is healthy and it's continuing to progress and evolve. Uh, the city council has put a lot of development dollars through our community development block grant programs into the downtown to focus areas where there's parking, 
uh, cleaning up the main street, putting in um, decorative lights and trees and cleaning up the, the main street. I, th I do think that we need to continue to focus on that and attract more activity downtown and develop the downtown area into more of a focal point. Um, but I think that we've done a good job over the last few years to do that. All right, Connie Kakavas, thank you very much for that. Again, the question is, do you think our main street slash downtown is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change that? Uh, same question for all the candidates. Now we're going to go to Jack Latham. I agree with everybody else. I think our downtown's doing good. There's, there's things on, unfortunately, our main street is a state highway, and that has its drawbacks. Uh, one of the things I wish ADOT could find a different place, uh, but I know we've talked with them before in years past about that. That's not going to happen. But uh, yeah, I think it takes away our downtown commercial area where the street lights are, I think it's just fantastic. I think the city council did a good job with the planning for the benches and the street lights on that and the landscaping. So I really don't have any complaints on the, the downtown area. All right, thank you, Jack Latham. Uh, Ray Duran, same question. I have been to a lot of main streets throughout the United States in all my travels to include Europe and Asia. And I have to say that your main street in Shello is extremely beautiful, with or without snow. I love the lights and I love the way that everything has been set up, especially with the vegetation. So I cannot see any further improvements that can be made at this time unless uh, citizens would contact me and let me know what could be added to that. But being a person that's been around the world, you have a beautiful city here. Thank you, Ray Duran. Uh, let's see, and finally, John Adams. John? Thank you. Um, I think the downtown is doing great. I think it's come a long ways. It looks really good with the projects the city council is uh, passing the, and getting those projects done and the sidewalks and the lights. I think at Christmas time, the Christmas lights they do looks really, really nice and good. I, I like to see us expand it, maybe get a little, little bit more down Main Street. But other than that, I think it looks really good. It's come a long ways, and I think it's going in the right direction. John Adams, thank you. All right, so we're going to go to question number two, and we'll stay with the same order. And again, you have a minute and a half to respond. The next question is, some people in our community say that we have traffic problems. What do you think? How would you mitigate those concerns or change the situation? And we're gonna start off with Melody Bell. I think every town, especially small towns, have problem with traffic. If any of us go to Flagstaff, <laughs> we can all, you know, feel that. Um, you know, trying to help with travel routes if people are going to specific destinations, I mean, like the gentleman to my right mentioned, ADOT, that we're a major highway, it always doesn't help with some of our traveling. Um, being a smaller community, it's kind of hard to avoid. Um, so getting together with the proper uh, ADOT and other people within the town that help with that is some, something that I would recommend to get all of our heads together to help with traveling. And But for the most part, I think that everybody's pretty respectable on the road and we as um, the people that live here know when the busy times are and we try to avoid going out onto the road to let the visitors be out there, so. All right, Melody Bell, thank you very much. All right, Don Wilson. And will you repeat the question? Yes, we can. Uh, some people in our community say that we have traffic problems. What do you think and how would you mitigate those concerns or change the situation? Well, unfortunately, we are a tourist town and, you know, we have in the summers, we have the people coming up because they want to get out of the heat. We have the winters, we have the people coming up to skiing, and we're limited as to our roadways. And we've already done some mitigation by putting in the road that cuts by the theater. I believe that's central. Um, and then we, you know, we have a couple different ways to head up to Pine Top. We have um, just one main road through. So it's, it's pretty much not a lot that we can do to mitigate that other than for the residents themselves to understand when those busy times 
happen that maybe we want to change our schedules a little bit to get around some of that. I know that when it's busy, we can't even turn left sometimes, so you might want to turn right and go around a different way and just kind of revamp the way we're traveling to help release some of the pressure of all the different vehicles coming up on those same roadways. All right, Don Wilson, thank you. Next in line, Connie Kakavas. Connie? Thank you. So um, being on a state highway is kind of like a curse and a blessing. We have the blessings of people coming through our community and uh, visiting the local uh, businesses and um, seeing what our town is all about. Over the last couple of decades, the council has been very focused on that traffic issue. Uh, we've put in Wolford Road, we've put in Penrod Road, not as bypasses, but for um, relief for our local uh, traffic um, users. Uh, this, the city council also, also has a very robust CIP program so that our roadways are constantly being looked at and evaluated so that we're um, doing rejuvenation on all of our streets every six years so that we can keep them in the best shape possible. But um, yes, it is difficult to get around in the summer, but again, I think it's a blessing that we have so many tourists up here and that people can come up here and enjoy our community and the environment in the White Mountains as much as we do. Connie, thank you. Connie Kakavas, Jack Latham. Traffic comes with growth, and we are a growing community. Uh, when I first moved here, most of the roads around here were two-lane. Um, the, the deuce is like it was, but they used to plow the snow to the center. And then the city came up with a plan that was going to build medians down the center of the deuce clubs, and they spent money to have plans drawn up for that. And then the state came back and said, now we're going to take away the parking on the side and put turn lane down the middle. So uh, it's a work in progress still. <laughs> the, the only complaint I have is at uh, Central and the Deuce, there needs to be a left turn light. That's a busy intersection, especially during school. It's right beside the chamber headquarters or chamber's office. Uh, there's no left turn. I have sat there with three cars, only three cars ahead of me, and I've had to sit through three light changes before I was able to go across. They have one at the next light, but that's where you have the U.S. government on one side and ADOT on the other side. I would really like to see one put in at Central. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jack. Jack Latham, Ray Duran. My experience in traffic control is where I have to agree with Mr. Latham. You do have a problem with that section at Central. There really does need to be a red light there. But the powers that be with the Arizona Department of Transportation, we're gonna to have to convince them that that has to be changed, that has to be fixed. And so uh, coming from a city that is about 100,000 people, what the traffic is there in the city of Yuma is the opposite of what you have here. Your traffic problem is generally at about spring and summertime. It is quite a bit of traffic there, whereas it's the opposite. And so it takes a lot of planning and convincing those that have that power to be to, to get things changed. But overall, your traffic that you do have is not that congested. So I think that the plans that have been made uh, by uh, the past councilman and mayor, they've done a pretty good job. All right, thank you, Ray. Ray Duran, John Adams, John? Yeah, I, I guess when you grow like Sholo has, you're gonna have a few uh, traffic problems. Um, it comes with it, I guess. And yeah, you learn to go around things and deal with things, but it's, um, I know the council's done a lot and in to prove uh, roads and different things that they could do. And I know they have stuff on plans and I don't, you know, whenever that happens, I know they've tried. Um, I guess I always look at it as I get, we get to live in the mountains so uh, I can handle a little traffic. I'm not sitting on the freeway. So it's not a, not a real bad thing that I don't see to roll down my window and fresh air versus the valley. So 
yeah, we got traffic, and yeah, it, there's intersections that get a little busy, and but we get to enjoy such a uh, beautiful area. And then as we grow, we get traffic, brings in businesses, and we our businesses uh, prosper, and which helps our community. And so there's uh, there's things like that that we just have to kind of accept, and and hopefully we can get a plan that we can and make some of the plans work to build roads that will maybe take some of that pressure off. All right. John Adams. Thank you, John. We're going to move on to the next question. What steps would you take to put our city in a firmer financial footing, and what project do you think will most support economic development moving forward? Melody Bell. Would you repeat the question, I sure please? will. <laughs> <laughs> need to repeat it for myself. <laughs> okay. What steps would you take to put our city in a firmer financial footing? And what project do you think will most support economic development moving forward? Well, probably bringing in more businesses, obviously, is what would bring more money to the town, more money to the people, and drive more business and more people into the town to have more, more business, more money. Um, I personally prefer mom and pop shops to be brought in up here because this is such a family-based community. And so those family projects and um, involving more youth um, is what I would suggest to bring more money into the community. Okay, Melody, thank you very much. Thank Melody you. Bell. Don Wilson? Well, so... So the city of Sholo is pretty financial or pretty financially um, responsible as it is right now and has a pretty good size budget that they work with and they're probably one of the richer cities in, in the state of Arizona. However, um, to, we do want to bring more business up here, but we want to be careful not to ruin our, the beauty of what we have and to um, ensure that whatever we do bring up fits within our our city's master plan and stuff. And I think that um, bringing in bigger business, it's fine. But again, you have the mom and pops that you don't want to put out. Um, but I think maybe improving our parks and rec, you know, getting activities up here, getting more people to come up with, you know, and participate in those activities and things like that. Just getting the more tourism will bring in more taxes, which will then, you know, help our economy as well. Um, I just don't think that we want to expand too quickly, too fast. We just want to be fiscally conservative with the budgets that we have. All right. Thank you, Don. Don Wilson. Next in line, Connie Kakavas. Connie, can repeat the question. I one sure more time. can. What steps would you take to put our city in a firmer financial footing? And what project do you think will most support economic development? moving forward? Well, um, like it or not, Shello is a tourism community and that's the base of our economic drive right now. However, I think that the city as a whole needs to continue to research different um, outlets, such as an event center. We need to have further research on that. The city has started to look at that. We need to determine if it's feasible for the city going forward to bring something like that in so that we can attract um, the many different <clears throat> sporting events or you know the quilting um, events and those kinds of things to our community because that's going to drive the economic base of tourism for our community. Um, I think that the city council needs to be continue to be conservative. We're very progressive, but we're very conservative. conservative. We've been blessed that we are able to put away reserves every year and we continue to grow that fund. It's the council's goal to make sure that for our major funds that we have three months of funds put away so that if something very drastic happens that the city can function for an additional three months without any income coming in. But we need to increase the tourism, increase those economic drives through events and bringing tourists up here and having them spend their money in our community. All right, Connie, thank you. Connie Kakavas. Jack Latham, you're next. 
I think the city has done a fantastic job with their finance department and with the council on, on the uh, financial well-being of this town. We, uh, like Connie said, we have a good reserve. We've always added to it. I was on the council back when the building crash came and we were, the city was, Sholo was about the only one in this area that did not have to lay off employees. We had some attrition that we didn't feel, but it, as to my memory, we didn't lay anybody off. Um, and that was due to, to what the current, or the council at that time had been doing by saving money. Uh, I think we need to continue to be conservative. I agree wholeheartedly with Connie as far as an event center. My hometown in East Texas, if you couldn't tell that I wasn't from Scotland, um, had only 5,000 people, and it's got a fantastic convention center. It's not huge, but you have a lot of local conferences you could have that we wouldn't have to go maybe to Honda or somewhere else to do. All right, Jack, thank you. Jack Latham. Ray Duran. Well, concerning financial footing that you have here, I am aware that the uh, city council and the mayor has done a fantastic job of maintaining and having a very healthy uh, budget and the way they've done the, uh, the budget all together and, and taking care of things to where you're, you're really healthy here. And that's a good thing. And that's one of the things that I look at is if I'm going to run for a position as a councilman, then I look and see what are the things that uh, you have to look at. And one of them, of course, is going to be monies and what you have. So you're pretty good there. And it's done a very good job. Uh, for projects, for economic development, it has to be controlled. You have to be very, very careful there. Um, yes, I've, I've seen the past meetings concerning having a, an event center and things like that. Well, that's a good idea to a point. You have to look at just exactly what size you're looking at. What can you draw? How, can, how much are you going to invest? Is the city going to take care of this? Or who's going to take care of it? Where's the money going to come from? So for economic development, you've got to be very careful there and see what the drawing is and how much can you pull from, let's say, the valley. Because... Uh, I've been caught too many times coming up to Sholo uh, from the other part of the state, and I have to drive 10, 15 miles an hour uh, all the way from Payson to here. So it's treacherous. you got to be careful. All right, Ray, thank you. Ray Duran, John Adams. John? I think the, the council and the mayor have done a really good job financially for the city. I feel that they have been really can um, have a good plan and they have done well with that. I believe that we do need to have a, a solid plan where we want to be in the future. And if it's a conference center, then we need to look at that. If it's not, then that's fine, but we need to at least look at it and see what can we do? Where do we want to be in 40 years? You know, how do we, how we want to grow? What's our plan? And if it fits in the conference center and it fits something like that happens, then then we need to do it. If it doesn't, then we go a different direction. But we need to keep bringing businesses up. We need to have a plan. So many communities want to do things and stop the growth or change things, and it hurts them. And, and you've got to have a control on, on, an, on the growth, but you've got to have a plan of how you're going to grow. And the city council has done a really good job in the past of doing that, and I think that needs to continue. John, thank you. John Adams. We're going to move on to our next question. Do you support a more aggressive application of our code enforcement to clean up junkyards in front lawns? And what do you think can be done about our current homeless panhandling situation to alleviate it? I'm going to start back with Melody Bell. Melody? I most definitely agree that a lot and residents in specific areas need to be cleaned up because we are proud where we live. And when outsiders come in, we don't want to have junk out front of yards all over the place. I mean, my business on the deuce just did a massive cleanup. And what it did on the deuce is amazing. And I wish we would have done it when we started the business. So I, I agree with going through and the cleanup of the community. 
Um, can you repeat the last half I of that question, please? I sure please? can. Uh, and what do you think can be done about our current homeless panhandling situation to alleviate it? I, I don't feel as if I see much panhandling up here. There are a few that are um, up by Ross and Sportsman's that I see there. Um, having more of our churches or our community or youth centers trying to help in that direction is to help them find resources to find jobs or better living situations so they're not panhandling on the street but i don't feel as if it's that big of a problem here as it is down in the valley thank you melody melody bell don wilson your turn and the first question is do i support more code enforcement yes i'll repeat the entire question thank you. do you support a more aggressive application of our code enforcement to clean up junkyards in front lawns, and what do you think can be done about our current homeless panhandling situation to alleviate it? As far as code enforcement, yes, I do, because we have a beautiful, beautiful city here, and I do think that there are some areas of the city that, that are not, for whatever reason, um, cleaned up. But then we also have to look at why is it not cleaned up? You know, is this individual have a disability and they can't clean it up? Maybe we can help them. Maybe we can provide them with resources to help them clean up their property. There, so there's usually a reason why somebody's property is that way. And, and they're not always just plain lazy. So maybe we need to um, d delve into that. But as far as the panhandling and the homeless, there are a number of resources up here in our city. There is the Homeless Outreach Coalition, there is the Salvation Army, there is the Veterans Village, there is the church that up at the ReCenter. There is, my job as a criminal justice coordinator is putting together resources for people to turn to, for food, for housing, for medical care, um, for mental illness. So it's reaching out to them and putting them in touch with the right person and the right resource to help them. Don, thank you. Don Wilson. Next in line, Connie Kakavas. Connie? I support and agree with Don wholeheartedly. Uh, I think it's a matter of putting the resources and those in need in, con in connection with each other, um, providing them with that um, resource to get the assistance that they need. Um, so I think as a city, we could help with that. Um, if, it, if they're panhandling, maybe the police officer may stop and give them a card with resources where they can gain assistance. Uh, as to support of our application of the code enforcement, I, I support what we're doing. Currently, we're doing it through um, kind of a complaint process or, you know, somebody, if, if they notice something, you can call the city and ask for them to look <clears throat> into the situation. I agree with Don, though. We need to consider circumstances and um, determine where we can assist our citizens in cleaning up their 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 community and their yards and their homes. But I think it's important that we um, be proud of our community and that um, I think they have a better outlook, too, when their home and their property is looking good. Thank you, Connie. Connie Kakavas. Jack Latham? The, uh, I'll start with the second half first. Um, the homeless and the panhandlers, I won't call the homeless a problem, but I think we do have a problem with panhandlers. And I approached um, the planning and zoning department director one time about it out at Walmart. You, couldn't, you can't go into any entry at Walmart without a panhandler there. I used to work at the hospital for seven years. And in the mornings, we would see them drive in, half of them in nice vehicles, park them inside the Walmart parking lot, take their stool over and sit on it with the sign day after day after day. I was told, well, it's a freedom of speech issue. We can't prevent it. Other cities do. So I don't know why that applies just to us. So I'd, I would like to see something done more on that. The... Um, at one time, this city did have a uh, code enforcer, and it caused a lot of problems, and that's why they went to, uh, like Connie said, the uh, 
complaint driven. So if you got a neighborhood or a neighbor that's got junk like that, call in a complaint. The city then will come out and investigate and find out what the circum circumstances are. All right, Jeff, thank you. thank you. Jack Latham. Ray Duran. I've uh, dealt with both topics extensively in my past. The aggressive code enforcement uh, can cause a problem if it's too aggressive. Now, you do have a system already where there's a lot of cleanup being done by the city of Sholo, which is absolutely extraordinary. It is just absolutely wonderful. And you just had that, I believe, a few weeks ago in my subdivision. So that's, that's a, a system that's working very well. Now, if you decide on a, court, a, a code enforcer, then it's going to take the type of person, and I've done this before, where you're going to have to meet with the people that have the problem and try to understand just exactly, are they disabled? Do they have something that prohibits them from doing something to, to clean up or whatever they need to do to maintain? That's a possibility. And of course, right now you have the, to rely on your neighbors to, to call in. Now for the homeless panhandling problem, as he just stated, yes, I have been here for three years I've seen certain people that are here during the summer and springtime, they're gone wintertime, and then they're back again. That's their lifestyle. Panhandlers, okay, that's going to be have to look at to see because I have dealt with panhandlers to move them on because it can be a, a, a health issue. Thank you. All right. Ray, thank you. Ray Duran. John Adams. Thank you. Um, I have to uh, say that I, I agree with Connie on the, the code enforcement. I, I know the city has a, a program that uh, they have now, and I, I think it works good. You've got to be careful with that, and every situation is a little different. But you, um, we all want a beautiful city. We all want things clean and, and nice, but, but uh, we need to be careful with that. I support the city, what it's doing now, I, and doing now, and I think that would be what the direction I, I would support. The panhandling and in that I I do see that at different corners up by Walmart and, and that and um, you know if if we could get them help or if there was programs to do that I would completely be supportive of that and and um, if that's what they wanted some of them don't want that but it was if that's what we could do and we could help out as it's some kind of program and that'd be great and I think that would be something we could do um, if, if that's what they if they wanted the individual is going to want to want to do that too so uh, those are my feelings on that John thank you John Adams this is our last question um, if you received a million dollar grant to use for the city any way you wanted what would you do with it and why also if you could persuade any new business to locate in Sholo what would it be starting off with Melody Bell um after we talked about the first question and what we would do for the business and the youth center that came up that Connie had mentioned, um, that's what I would do. I would bring in a big old rec center, youth center for the youth and or for adults. We could have soccer tournaments that could come up where everybody from all the state of Arizona comes. It drives a lot of money for hotels. We charge fees, um, make it low maintenance. We could have indoor events for adults living in a colder community. Our kids don't always get out during the winter. So this would be the opportunity to do so. Um, and read me the second part again. I apologize. That's okay. Also, if you could persuade any new business to locate in Sholo, what would it be? Chick-fil-A. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of serious. Um. <laughs> A new business. <clears throat> um, I, I think kind of of us like a played against sports would be a great business to bring in. Um, there are, some people don't always have all the money to go down to the valley or purchase online brand new sporting equipment um, for young and older. And with us being a vacation destination, if they're up skiing and something breaks, we can have a um, a used sporting goods store, and I think that would be very beneficial. Melody, thank you. Melody Bell. 
All right, Don Wilson. A million dollars, huh? A million dollar grant. <laughs> so I think with a million dollar grant, I would want to have the city continue to beautify the city, continue to expand out our main street, continue um, to build our parks and rec, and to, um, we have an aquatic center that could maybe use a reef, uh, refacing, you know, continue to expand and market the the city and and um, bring people up here for tourism because that's what we are as a tourism town. Um, the second one was oh the business. Um, I would like to say Harley Davidson, but um, I'm thinking more um, maybe a, a Hobby Lobby or something like that. You have a lot of people that retired up here. You have people that are crafters up here. You have craft fairs all the time. And so if you had something like that where people could go in and buy um, the different things to, to help promote. I mean, they can go to our farmer's market. They can go to our Sholo days, you know, and sell their goods. I just think maybe that would be a good one to bring up. All right, Don. thank you. Don Wilson, Connie Kakavas, your turn. A million dollars. A million dollar grant, what I would, would you do? I would absolutely put that money towards a splash pad interactive park that the city has already started to try and plan. Um, we started the base work for that. Um, it's an interactive um, playground where children that are disabled can interact with able children with the apparatuses that are in this park. I just think that that would be the greatest thing. That would be just like Christmas. Um, for the business, I would really like to see a culinary arts school come to our community. Cool. Connie, thank you. Mm -hmm. Connie Kakavas. Jack? Jack Latham? Well, I like Chick-fil-A, but it'd be my second choice. <laughs> As we say in Texas, a Whataburger would be my first choice. <laughs> Other people pronounce it Whataburger, but we say Whataburger. But um, we need some quality retail clothing places. Uh, we don't need more convenience stores, dollar stores, uh, things of that nature. Um, we're off the beaten path, so we're not going to get a manufacturer of any substance here. We're too far from the interstate and railroad shipping lanes. Uh, but I would like to see some, you know, you, you go to a place here and buy a shirt, and you'll see 15 people within a week wearing the same shirt. <laughs> so I... I, I don't advocate going to the valley to buy clothing, but sometimes if you want to get some quality stuff, that's where you have to go. Uh, the million dollars, uh, the Civic Center, I would like to see. I had a, an employee at the hospital that had an autistic son, and he couldn't stay here. Now they have the Lexington, I think that's the name of it, Academy to, for autistic children, but we need more things for people like that can stay here and find the care they need. All right, Jack, thank you. Jack Latham, Ray Duran. With a million dollar grant, I, I would agree with uh, some of my fellow people here that, yeah, parks and rec activities for the people that are here, and um, not only if, if it's possible d during the, the summer and springtime, but maybe something during the winter time in addition to. So that's where I would look at trying to uh, just bringing it back to the citizens of, of Sholo. Now for new businesses, uh, gee whiz, I've gone to Safeway and uh, Walmart and too many times the shelves are empty, not just through the pandemic problems that we have, but one of the things that really, really uh, made me happy when we did move up here was that you also had a, uh, a Kmart. Well, it's gone. And I did a lot of shopping there. So I really would think that we need to attract another type of uh, supermarket because the ones that we have are just jam-packed, especially at the end of the month and the middle of the month. So I would uh, try to do an awful lot working towards attracting some type of Fries, Albertsons, back. All right, Ray, thank you. 
Thank Raise you. your hand. John Adams. Thank you. A million dollars, huh? <laughs> um, I guess I'd kind of tie it together. If we got a million dollar grant, I would like to see us hopefully work with the business to uh, work with our youth to train them in skills that they could use to stay on the mountain. We lose too many of our youth off the mountain. They go down to the valley and we're losing a valuable asset to our community. We need them. And so I think if that was um, a possibility and we got a million dollar grant, I would want to see what business would be interested to come up and work with the youth, work with kids that's graduated, give them skills that they can learn to stay up here on the mountain that will benefit them. They can make a living up here and our community could grow and be stronger and uh, year round residents that we can can make a, a good foundation for the, the summer visitors that, that do come up and enjoy it. So I think I would tie it together and do something like that. John, thank you. John Adams. All right, we have a few minutes, just a couple of minutes here. Um, Galila, we could take uh, some questions. We had uh, a basket that we put at the entrance for people to write down questions. And so we're going to see if we have any um, any. Uh, entries into our question basket and we'll take a look at those and uh, give you guys uh, an opportunity to answer a couple of questions from the audience. Here we go. Today we don't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> our basket is empty. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do Should we turn to the audience and see if anybody has thought of something since you came in and and uh, and and we're still oh we've got a question. All right come on up. <laughs> Here, I'll step aside and you can uh, stand there and ask your question. Thank you. I'm Laura Singleton with the White Mountain Independent. I'm sorry to have to take your pictures while you're answering questions. I just wanted to see if before I left, if I could get each of your emails. So I do have your phone numbers, but if I could get your emails, so if I have any follow-up questions, if I didn't get a quote quite, quite right or something, that I could follow up with you. All right, Laura, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Say that again. Switch to the mirrors. Yes, yes. So that's going to conclude uh, our time with the council candidates. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking such great time and your thoughtful answers. We appreciate it very, very much. And now we're going to have you guys go ahead and come into the audience and have our uh, two mayor candidates come up. Give these guys a big hand. Yeah, good idea. We have two candidates for mayor, John Leach Jr. and Gene Kelly are coming up and they're going to have the same questions with the same amount of time. We're also going to start off with um, their introductions. They'll have two minutes to tell us why they want to run for mayor and tell us a little bit about themselves for those of you who don't know them. And so uh, you guys come on up and we're going to have them. Uh, social distance, practice a little social distancing here. Dalila's going to tell you guys, direct you where to sit. All right, thank you so much. We keep moving farther and farther to the right for some reason. <laughs> we uh, did a drawing before uh, the evening here, and as far as the order of who will go first, as far as the questions and the introductions, and John Leach Jr., you're going to go first, and you're going to have two minutes to tell everybody why you want to run for mayor and uh, also tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, let me start out and tell a little bit about myself. I've been a resident of Sholo for over 46 years, graduated from Sholo High School in 1979, um, my, married to my lovely wife back there for over 32 years. We have three kids, four grandkids, all of them. Our, all of our kids been born and raised here. Grandkids, we have two left here in Sholo. Um, I retired from the Sholo Fire Department, spent over 22 years with the fire department. Um, second generation uh, business owner here in town. My son's third generation running a body shop here in Sholo. Um, spent about six years on the planning and zoning commission, four year, or two years of that as chairman. Um, currently, I've been on the uh, city council for over 10 years. I was a uh, vice mayor for about four years of that. Um, 
member of the Sholo Elk Lodge for over 35 years, uh, member of the Sher White Mountain Sheriff's Posse for over 32 years. Um, currently, I'm the uh, chairman of the NACOG. I just voted into that last Thursday. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty nice position. As far as why I want to be mayor, I've dedicated my whole entire adult life in this town, and I, I absolutely love it. I'm passionate about this town. Um, I can't think of anything I could, would want to do different if I wasn't involved in this town. I, 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 I really don't know what else I could do. Um, there's just so many projects that I think our city needs to continue forward on, and I, I just want to be part of that. I want to continue growing the way we've been growing with the slow growth. It's one of the hardest things we can do as a city councilman is try to keep our small town feeling but still have that growth. So it's kind of a tough thing to do, but I just, I just want to continue being involved with this community that I love. It gave me everything that I have today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, John. John Leach, Jr. Now uh, we're going to go to our other candidate for mayor, Gene Kelly. Gene? Well, thank you uh, for this opportunity, first of all. And uh, I realize I ran a chance by wearing a tie. Nobody would know who I am. I am Gene Kelly, though, okay? And I, uh, I'll give you outside government synopsis real fast if I can here. And that is I graduated from ASU with a bachelor's degree in elementary education and then took a master's degree, taught public school for 12 years, uh, spent six years in military service, discharged honorably at the rank of a platoon sergeant. And as the joke goes with uh, those uh, uh, officers, sorry, uh, Mr. Durant, but uh, I earned my paycheck. It, oh, well, no, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> anyway, um, anyhow, okay. In Sholo, moved to Sholo in 79, um, left teaching, went into real estate because you can't move as a teacher with all those extra hours and time. Uh, it just don't work. Um, anyhow, um, was on planning and zoning for some five, six years, was served as a chairman of that uh, body, uh, appointed to the city council been on the city council for 26 plus years, served as mayor during the Rodeo Chetiskai fire. I don't want to repeat that experience. I want to be the mayor to keep things the way they are. You know, most people say they want to change this and want to change that. Sholo is in excellent financial condition. I want to keep us that way. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. Gene Kelly. All right, so we're going to go to our questions, the same questions that the council candidates had. And uh, John Leach Jr., we're going to start with you. Uh, do you think our Main Street downtown is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change that? Well, like everybody already said, it's absolutely healthy. Um, it's getting beautified, it seems like, weekly down there with, with some of the projects Main, Main Street's done with the... I can't think of the road, but on the Deuce of Clubs where they put turn, turn by the name of the card. Um, but some of the other projects that we're doing on that Main Street is continuing the sidewalks, the beautification, more lighting, more plants. Um, all that we need to continue, not just downtown here, but down the Deuce. I'd like to see more of the lights going down the Deuce, more <laughs> trees being, being planted down the Deuce. Um, but continue what we're doing. We're, we're going in the right direction now, but of course... You know, it, it takes more money that we have to budget, and it takes a few years to get to where we need to be. But the sidewalk beautification of the downtown area, to continue that and the and the plants is is absolutely phenomenal. All right, John, thank you, John Leach Jr. Appreciate it, uh, Gene Kelly. Thank you. Um, if I needed to pick at it, I can do that because the design that was put in place allowed the trees to grow right into those expensive lights. I don't think that's good planning. If we put in any more lights and trees, I hope we separate them enough that uh, they don't grow into one another. Um, a lot of money. I'm a penny pincher. No question about it. People tell me that. 
And it's not always a compliment, but I always tell them, thank you for the compliment anyway. <laughs> but uh, no, it's very, very expensive. And if we're going to do it, let's do it with some planning that makes some sense. And it, it is pretty. I like it. I am very concerned about the well-being of the plants. If we have significant snow, ADOT salts the snow and plows it right in to the the tree wells, it's going to kill a lot of trees. All right, Gene, thank you. Gene Kelly, we're going to go back to John Leach Jr. for our question number two. Some people in our community say that we have traffic problems. What do you think? How would you mitigate those concerns or change the situation? Well, like everybody else has stated already, the traffic problems is, is a blessing, actually, because it brings money to our community. You know, we, we put in the Penrod extension, uh, Wolford extension. We put in extensions that a lot of us that we know about that we can take those avenues to, to bypass some of the traffic and we can let the tourists come through our town. I absolutely would never want to see a, 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 a bypass for the city of Sholo. I want people to come into our town. Um, but most of us, we know the back roads. If you live here long enough, you know how to get around the traffic. Yes, you're not going to go left on the Deusa Clubs and the... And the in the summertime and sometimes in the wintertime, but that's a blessing to me. I don't, I don't see traffic as a problem. I really don't. Yeah, I know when not to go out um, and how to avoid the traffic if I, if I got to detour the town. But I, I absolutely love to see all the people in our community, and that's what we're about. So I'd like to see more. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Thank you, John Leach Jr. Gene Kelly, uh, your turn. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, the question has been hammered pretty good by our uh, council candidates as well as by John now. Uh, most of the traffic that people gripe about in Sholo has to do with the state highway. And the city is not in charge of that, although many people think we are. Uh, we ask for left turn signals uh, to be put in place, and many have been, and they have been a real blessing to relieve the traffic, uh, such as uh, down uh, on the Wolford intersection with the state highway. Uh, half of the traffic coming goes up Wolford. In many cases, I watch half of the traffic not go straight through on the state highway, but turn left. Without that left turn signal, it would not be possible. So I think we're doing what we can. When I look at real traffic in the valley and have watched set through multiple light changes just to go straight, we don't, we don't have much of that up here. So yeah, it's not perfect, but we're working on it. And the state highway will at least listen to our people when they talk. They don't always jump right to what we suggest. Thank you. All right, thank you, Gene. Gene Kelly. John Leach Jr., the next question. What steps would you take to put our city in a firmer financial footing, and what project do you think will most support economic development moving forward? Well, firmer, we're, I think we're, if not one of the strongest cities in the state. I mean, we have three and a half million in reserve, like I think some of the other candidates have stated. We're as strong as you can absolutely be. Continue doing what we're doing. Our city staff is probably, obviously I've never worked for other city staff, but they're the, the best around. I, I've met other city councils and other not council, city staff, and we have the best city staff, which makes our job better as a city councilman. Um, what was the second question? The second question is what project do you think will most support economic well, development moving forward? <laughs> I'm. I'm 100% would like to move forward on an activity center somehow, some way. I don't know how we can do it, if we can do it financially or not, but that it brings more people up here to play volleyball. It's a winter activity. I look at it, summertime, we have plenty to do. We need something in the wintertime, and I think activity center is our next best thing. It keeps everybody right here. We don't have to travel for events. We get to stay right here. I don't know if we can afford it. I have no idea, but I don't want to be sitting on this council and, and planning and zoning for the last 16 years and not continue forward on it until somebody tells me that our, we can't afford it. I don't want to see this city go broke. 
on an activity center. And I think we can build it small enough that we can afford to do it. So it's it's one of my pet peeves. It has been for, like I said, for at least 16 years that I've been involved with the city. And I, I want to continue with that until I see any something different tells me no. All right, John, thank you. John Leach, Jr. We're going to turn now the question uh, to Gene Kelly. And you're going to repeat the question. I sure am. What steps would you take to put our city in a firmer financial footing? And what project do you think will most support economic development moving forward? Okay. John and I separate here a little bit more than we have on any other question. The first part of it, we're directly in, in sync. The city of Sholo is in wonderful financial shape. Compared to other cities around the state, we are in one of the top positions financially. And there's a good reason for that, and that's conservative budgeting and conservative spending in the past. There's been some proposals for some preposterous ideas, in my opinion, and had we gone far, we would be in terrible shape right now. I'm all for youth, ball fields, all these things that we can do. Uh, we spend a lot more money on a lot of areas than most cities can. We do what we can to attract business and be friendly to business coming in. I would not support one proposal that was, had been put forward recently that would cost us $25 million to build an event center, no. I would not support that, and I am all for youth. Thank you. Gene, thank you. Gene Kelly. John Leach, Jr., we're going to go to the next question. Do you support a more aggressive application of our code enforcement to clean up junkyards in front lawns, and what do you think can be done about our current homeless panhandling situation to alleviate it? Um, as far as the code enforcement, absolutely. You know, it's it's tough to do. I know some of our code enforcement people work on weekends. I think we have one that works on a Saturday to do some of that. It's tough during the week. Um, but absolutely, it's, you know, the, a town like this, everything's complaint driven. I think other people have said the same thing. You know, if we see something, we call the city and then, then nothing happens. So we blame it on the city. But you know what? You got to look at other things. Like I think uh, Don said, made a comment about can they? Are they able to? Can they afford to? There's other things that I think need to be looked at other than just code enforcement on it. Um, I, I think meeting with the homeowner, you know, there's a lot of people that park their cars on their front yards right now because there's no parking on the street, on their side of the street. That's terrible. But that's all they have. And there is an enforcement for that, that you're not allowed to do that if you have a parking spot. So it's a tough situation. It definitely is. Cleaning up our yards, the city does everything in the world for us, practically for free, that, that to help clean our yards. And I see people stack stuff out there all the time. So I'm going to hurry. What was the other one? The other one was... The panhandlers. Yes. I, you know, I, I agree with Jack. I think there's something we could do. I know there's something you can't do on private property that they can... Panhandle, I think that's the problem with Walmart because it's private city property. Maybe you can't. Um, as far as the homeless, I think we just got to get the churches more involved. I really do. The churches are always looking for an avenue to help the homeless. Sorry. John, thank you. John Leach Jr., thank you. Um, all right, same question yeah, for you, speed, Gene John. Kelly. Okay. Uh, taking the homeless first, I want to spend a little time on that. Um, it's a matter of education, which I'm going to come to on the first part of the question, too. Uh, encouragement, education, and working with people instead of coming down with a big hammer has always worked better. Okay? So that kind of answers part of both of them. But what you have to realize, and most people don't, and I've asked some questions of authorities and people that know, one of the problems with panhandling is you can't help them because they're drawing in hundreds of dollars a day. It's true. You may not believe it, but that is one of the problems with the panhandling. It's not they're soliciting money for food or need. 
It's just way <coughs> too profitable to get them to stop, okay? So back to cleaning up, education, working with people, it's gonna work a lot better than coming down with a big hammer. Thank you, Gene. Gene Kelly, back to John Leach Jr. Uh, if you received a million dollar grant to use for the city any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Also, if you could persuade any new business to locate in Sholo, what would it be? Prize. I'm gonna go <laughs> number two first. And I'd love to see them in the, wa or the Walmart building. I don't know if it's feasible, but it would fill that building. Kmart. Um, Kmart building, I'm sorry. Um, million dollars. Actually, I, I'd like to continue beautifying the city. I was thinking the event center earlier, but that's not going to, as it was just stated, it's going to cost us $25 million apparently to do that. I don't think the city would ever go in debt for $25 million on activity center, so that part I agree with. The part about we would spend it, I don't agree with, but I, I'd like to see more money put in beautifying the city. Absolutely. Continue some of the sidewalks. You know, you look up 16th Avenue. I don't know if you've been up 16th Avenue lately. We, you know, we're putting sidewalks on, on the west side of that street and then a little path up there. I'd love to see more of that. I'd love to see more sidewalks and gutters. And, and that stuff's expensive, but beautifying our city so we can walk around this town. You know, so we do have some dangerous streets in the community right now that, that we need to put sidewalks on and can't afford it. So I, I would like to continue the walking through through the city of Shola with more trails and more sidewalks and gutters and, and beautify the city with plants. And if they grow into the, tree, into the beautiful lights, we can trim those trees up a little bit so they won't grow into those lights. So I, I would spend it on that, even though my heart's that activity center that I'm not gonna spend $25 million on as long as I'm sitting up here, that I promise. All right, thank you, John. I don't John. have it either, but. <laughs> John Leach Jr., thank you. Uh, same question for you, Gene, Gene Kelly. Well, I, another major grocery outlet would be wonderful for Sholo. I mean, that's what I hear all the time. So that's, that's what I'd go with is what I'm hearing. Um, a million dollars, and I'm not really trying to be funny when I say this, but wait, that's nothing when it comes to doing a project. I still go into shock with the numbers that they come up with whenever they tell me what something's gonna cost. Uh, I can remember many, many, many years ago, many years ago, when they said a road cost a million dollars a mile to build through the mountains. Well, I wonder if it isn't a million dollars a foot now. I mean, it's insane what things cost. So it would be very little that you could do with a million dollar grant. And um, I, I can go against uh, more foot traffic uh, improvements uh, that would not go very far, but it'd go further than if we're building highways. Uh. All right, Gene, thank you. Gene Kelly. All right, that concludes the questions that we have here. And uh, our basket has remained empty. Does anybody have a question that they would like to uh, ask these two Candidates for mayor. And we have a question, Laura. <laughs> you have my email address. Yeah, email address. <laughs> Come on up so everyone can hear you. This, I need a camera for this question. <laughs> huh. I wondered if I might have all the candidates come up for one group shot, please. What? Okay. Well, before we'll do we that do that. that. Okay. Okay, Laura, Thank that's you. wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, uh, last call for any questions. And we don't have any. You, uh, you, uh, yes, John has one. No, I don't have a question, but I just, a statement, if nothing else, I just want to let everybody know that I'm 100% I'm dedicated my life to, to become mayor of this town. So I just want everybody to know that, you know, I'm semi-retired. I'm ready for this. I, there was years ago that I thought about doing this, but to this point in my life, you'll get 100% dedication to me, um, and I have the time to do it. So I just wanted to let everybody know that I, you can tell I'm very passionate about the city of Sholo. I've, I've, I've stuck up for this town maybe one time too many. I could have gotten in trouble, but when somebody, I hear somebody talking about, there's no time. 
Well, this isn't part of our form. Sorry, okay. So but anyway. Gene Kelly has also have an opportunity. But just, just so you know how passionate I am about this town, I, I've, I've gotten myself in tr trouble many of times for somebody bad-mouthing this town. Um, not just the town, but this community. I'm very passionate about it. Um, and I have the dedication of my wife and family to continue on what we've been doing as a city councilman. Thank you. All right, thank you for sharing that. We need to give Gene Kelly an opportunity uh, also for a closing comment. Thank you. Um, I could tag on to his same comments about being dedicated to the city. And I guess one way I would try to convince you of that is in 26 years of being on the city council, being mayor and vice mayor, during those years, I've missed three meetings. I am maybe a disgustingly healthy person. I didn't come to the meetings very, very sick. I, I just come to them because my wife and I, if we're planning a trip out of town, we plan it around the city council meetings. And so, yes, I am dedicated to the city. I am dedicated to keeping Sholo in the financial position it is in. And which is one of the best in the whole state. And we're there not because of me, but not against me either, okay? I support that. We've had fabulous staff that have suggested conservative budgets and conservative spending. Don't save, save up money for an anticipated big cost. How many cities do that? Not many that I have, I don't know of any other. And when we did the sewer project, we only had to borrow half of the money because we had half of it saved up. Thank you. All right, Gene, thank you for those closing <clears throat> comments. Gene Kelly, let's give these uh, mayor <clears throat> candidates a round of applause. And so this is going to go ahead and conclude our candidate forum this evening. Uh, we want to thank... Um, the Sholo Chamber of Commerce for sponsoring the candidate forum this evening, and of course all the candidates that participated, and Mel West and the City for uh, Television crew for putting this on the air. My name is Jean Barton. You guys have a wonderful and safe evening, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. 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 TV off. TV's on.